to drop your defenses. You don't have to do it by yourself. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Be still and know. Good evening and welcome to our Good Friday service. We'd like to open with a reading from James Dillett Freeman entitled, The One We All Might Be, Part One. And James writes, There was one who showed us what we all might be. He did not so much tell us what our lives should be like. He lived the life that we might live. The one we all might be had faith in other people. He saw them, he saw in them potentialities that others overlooked. He knew them to be capable of more than they themselves thought. He inspired sinners to become saints, social, social outcasts to become public benefactors, weaklings to become towers of strength. He changed common fishermen into fishers of men. The one we all might be saw through life's imperfections, through sickness and doubt, through poverty and fear, through hatred and pride, even through death. And he called forth wholeness, faith, joy, love, and life. He showed us what life might be, lived to the utmost of its possibilities. He showed us what a person might be who held to the highest 
and best in himself. How hard we find it to love one or two persons. Yet he showed us that it is possible to learn to love all. How many hours we have wasted in resentment. Yet this one showed us that it is possible to live free from hatred. He knew how much a loving heart is worth. He had a sense of right values. He was able to judge not by appearances, able to put first things first, able to see how much more important than material treasures are the treasures of heart and mind. He saw people as they are, flesh and blood creatures with physical needs and desires. Not once did he suggest, it will be better for your soul if your body suffers, so I will not help you. Those who were sick, he healed. Those who were hungry, he fed. He knew that love does not exact pain payments as the price of spiritual growth. This is no man of sorrows, though he wept. Though he suffered, his was no tragic life. Even his death was not truly tragic, for how quickly the darkness of cavalry was wiped away in the light of Easter morning. The energy released by the overcoming that he made at death is still flooding 2,000 years later into millions of lives. And with that, if you have a candle on your altar, I would invite you to Light it as you connect with the one we all might be as I light our Christ candle and we open in prayer. In living, loving presence, it is with deep gratitude for this one that we all might be, this great example that we are here to celebrate this Easter weekend to connect heart to heart with one another and more importantly, most importantly, with that Christ presence within, that we allow that presence within us to come to life and to allow it to radiate forth as wholeness, as peace, as love, that we too may be a great example, that we too may demonstrate what it means to be in total alignment with that presence of life, of God shining through us. It is in this knowing that I bless this Easter weekend that we all may renew and reawaken and center in. And with that, we say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And so if you haven't already done so, um, later in the service, there will be a self-anointing. So you'll want to make sure you have a little vial of oil in front of you. We wanted to give you plenty of time to go get that, even if it's olive oil out of your kitchen pantry. So as you might notice, Becca is not in the corner of your screen today. And that is because we are giving them and our deaf and hearing impaired congregants a special ASL interpreted version of the service. We'll be sharing that special version on our website, YouTube, and Facebook within the next day or two. We have a lot of fun and meaningful activities planned for this Easter weekend. And that begins, obviously, here. And then um, on Easter morning at 7 a.m., we will have a special sunrise guided meditation on our Facebook page. Then at 8 a.m., you are invited to join Licensed Unity teacher Debbie Cole for our contemplative service. That will also be streamed on our Facebook page. Now, while we can't all gather for pancakes in Friendship Hall, our chef extraordinaire, Shonda Birch, will be hosting a virtual pancake-making show at 9 a.m. on Facebook Live. The show is virtual. The pancakes are real. 
Um, and if you love cooking shows or you just want to see the magic that is Shonda cooking in a kitchen, I promise you, you will want to tune in for that. So we are launching this Sunday virtual fellowship, and that will happen at 10.45 a.m. prior to our main Easter service. Our hope is that this will feel just like the spontaneous gatherings that happen here on Sundays in the foyer and Friendship Hall and in the hallways. So you can join a group, have a conversation, or just listen in, engage and connect, and then hop on to another meeting to say hello to some of your other friends. Several hosts have stepped forward, and you can find all of the details on our virtual fellowship page. Join our youth and family ministry director, Linda Hancock, for a special virtual Easter celebration for our families, complete with an outdoor Easter egg scavenger hunt on the UCOH grounds, which she has filmed, followed by a sacred ceremony in the chapel. Look for separate videos for the indoor and outdoor events, which will be made available on all of the Youth and Family Facebook pages. Finally, at 11.25 a.m., join Reverend Steve Bolin and members of Celebration as we rise in consciousness together. Our main service will be streamed to our website, Facebook, and YouTube. All of our Easter weekend activities, along with a special message from Reverend Steve, can be found on our Easter 2020 webpage, which is at unityhills.org slash Easter 2020. And whether you join us for one or all of those activities, know that our hearts are connecting with you and that we love you very much.
Good evening and happy Good Friday. When I sat with what it would be that I would speak to you about tonight, I thought, well, let's see. We've got COVID-19. We've got Good Friday. We've got you experiencing this service, not in the sanctuary, but in the sanctuary of your home. What I need is a little bit of backup. <laughs> I asked for that backup. I asked for the guidance. And what I got was a glimpse of you in your homes watching this service, doing what you do and what you've been doing over these last number of weeks, a different experience for you, for us, for all of us. And the words I heard was, your home, a place of peace and healing. Now, if you're like many homes across this country and around the world, that hasn't always been the predominant feeling over these last number of days. Probably a lot of angst, some fear, a number of other experiences that don't seem like peace and healing. And yet I want to begin this time together tonight with gratitude. Gratitude for celebration and the beautiful music they've brought. Gratitude for Tammy and what she shared. Gratitude for our technical team and working so hard to bring this message and the messages of Sunday to you. And gratitude to you for your willingness to experience Good Friday in a whole new way. Gratitude for you in all that you've been doing to experience a better part of life as we move forward in this time. Some of you have been sewing masks. We have one on our altar. Some of you have been working despite some of the challenges that are out there and some of the fears that you face. A number of you have been spending time calling friends and family and saying, how are you? Connecting in the way that you can, using some of the time to get outside and wave at those that are also outside trying to get a little bit of exercise and fresh air. I think about your home and all of us in Unity Church of the Hills as a team, as a family, blessing each other in the homes that we share. Whether that home is a small room or a mansion or something in between, it is your home and it is important to you and it is important to us. I think about what Jesus may have called his home in his final days in that experience of walking around and touching and being touched, healing and teaching in that particular setting. The Last Supper took place in the upper room, a place that we would visit again in Scripture after the resurrection. But on that particular evening, as he gathered his disciples together, he spoke to them. He washed their feet and said, this is an act of service that is a model for you to follow. And then he gave them a commandment, a new commandment. And I would ask that we hear this commandment as if he's speaking to us. He said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Now, we'd heard the essence of that commandment when he said, love God with all of your heart and all of your mind and all of your soul and love your neighbor as yourself. But he added a piece to this commandment for his disciples and for all of us who are called to follow him as a model. He said to them, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you, love one another. He set what for some may seem like an impossibly high bar. And yet he knew that as we strive to love one another as he has loved us, 
not only in that time of those 33 years of ministry and dating back to when he was born there in Bethlehem, but in all of the time that has elapsed, all of the 2,000 years that Tammy spoke to in that beautiful piece from James Dillett Freeman, all of the loving that he has done, he's asked us to love one another even as he has loved us. And so we're given something to make our homes richer and deeper, stronger in that peace and in that healing, allowing us to release more of the fears so that there is more room for that love, to follow the guidance that he gave us in that beautiful piece that James Dillett Freeman shared, looking past appearances, forgiving freely, knowing the truth about each other. I want us to look at this concept of home as it, as it is specific to your home, your physical home, but also the home of our heart. And finally, I want to talk for just a little bit about the home that is our spiritual home, this spiritual community that we call Unity Church of the Hills. Against the backdrop of this change in our life that we call the settling in and trying to deal with the pandemic, against the backdrop of Good Friday and guided by spirit, let us move into that experience richly and deeply tonight. Instead of focusing on the fears of this major interruption called a pandemic, we're shifting our focus to listening more deeply to each other. In the encounters that we've had here at the church, which are very minimal, and always with that six-foot distance, we find ourselves listening to each other more deeply. When I speak to you on the phone or when I'm in conversation with my beautiful wife Mary back in Georgia, I find myself listening more deeply, paying more attention to the small acts of kindness, paying more attention to willingness to be in this experience together. We also need to in order to deepen this experience of peace and healing, we need to laugh more, to do that when we can, to read those funny things that come across the email, things like, I really don't know where to go for Easter, my bedroom or the kitchen. <laughs> and I'm feeling the need to do social distancing from my refrigerator. <laughs> Whatever it might be for us, Allow yourself that lightness, even though it may seem a little bit trite, it is a gift to laugh. And we realize that one of the strongest things that we can do for our physical bodies are to laugh, to allow those endorphins to flow, and also to show fear the door more often. I offer that the real heart of our physical home is our spiritual heart. I'm going to ask you, if you would, for, for just a moment to lift your left hand to your physical heart, and as you do, allow yourself to feel and think about your spiritual heart, that center of love that is one of the 12 powers that we might have experienced in the virtual Easter egg hunt or that you might experience walking our labyrinth that heart of love and allow yourself with me to feel that heart opening farther than it has in any of the experience of dealing with this pandemic. It is Easter weekend. It is a time when we're asking ourselves to rise higher in consciousness, to allow ourselves to be more in touch with our hearts. If you are alone, you're not really alone. You're there with the experience of the feeling and the presence of the Holy Spirit, of Jesus, of your guardian angel. But if you're there with another person and you're allowing yourself to 
feel together this open-heartedness, allow yourself the feeling of the resonance of those two hearts, alone, with another, with children playing nearby in a multi-generational home, whatever it might be, give yourself the gift of feeling the divine resonance of open hearts, more willing to forgive, more willing to look past little appearances to resonate with the Christ indwelling. That's really what this weekend is all about. What I heard spirits say is that each heart plays a part in this beautiful time of coming together. I'm encouraged to take a moment to read to you from my favorite book, A Course in Miracles, a gift that came to us from Jesus some 2,000 years after he walked this earth, and one in which he clarifies so much, particularly around this time of year that we call Easter. I'm reading now from that work in the chapter on the lessons of love. Your resurrection is your reawakening. I am the model of birth, but rebirth itself is merely the dawning of your mind of what is already in it. God placed it there himself, and so it is true forever. I believed in it and therefore accepted it as true for me. Help me to teach. Help me to teach. To teach it to our brothers and sisters in the name of the kingdom of God. But first believe that it is true for you or you will teach amiss. Jesus, in unity and in new thought, we consider as the great example, not the great exception. He came to teach us through his example the power of unconditional love, the power of God's love for all of us, wherever we are, with whatever we might have done, and whoever we think we might be, to move past that, to experience this idea of the kingdom of God in its truth. He goes on to talk about that experience on Maundy Thursday. My brothers slept during the so-called agony in the garden, but I could not be angry with them because I knew I could not be abandoned. He's telling us in his words, I wasn't in agony. I knew I was not a body, and I knew that death was impossible. More about that on Easter Sunday morning. He goes on to say, I'm sorry when my brothers do not share my decision to hear only one voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit, because it weakens them as teachers and as learners, yet I know they cannot really betray themselves or me and that it is still on them that I must build my church. There is no choice in this, because only you can be the foundation of God's church. He's speaking to you and to me. He's speaking to all of us as that foundation. A church is where an altar is, and the presence of the altar is what makes the church holy. A church that does not inspire love has a hidden altar that is not serving the purpose for which God intended it. The altar that we're talking about in this moment is the altar of your precious and beautiful heart, the home of your heart. And in that altar, in that place, replete with God's love, replete with God's experience with you and for you of peace and healing and wholeness, of eternal life, you and I are the church that God is referring to. I want to move now to talking for a moment about the home that is our church, our Unity Church of the Hills, our spiritual center, this beloved place that most of you who are experiencing this service tonight have experienced, but for some, maybe just hearing about it, or perhaps you're far across the country experiencing our time together. 
I'll tell you just a little bit about this amazing place. It is a place that is centered in love. It is a place that is centered in a love and respect for each other. Do we do it perfectly? <laughs> oh, no. But we do it with an intention to look past an appearance, to go past it and past it and past it, asking for all the help we need until we find again that place of oneness, that place of wholeness, that place of peace and healing. And so it is a place that is welcoming, accepting, kind, and loving. It is a place that is giving. It gives to this community. It gives to work that is worthy all the way to South Africa for a decade, more than a decade of time, making dreams possibilities there and around the world in the way that it's guided, it reaches out and touches. But the greatest work that it does is in the loving from your home, from this home, from the places where we go and allow our light to shine. It is a light and a smile and a touch and a warmness that we always don't always see, but we know is going out, multiplied by the Holy Spirit, touched by the presence of love. That is a beautiful gift that is central to this amazing place and work that we call Unity Church of the Hills. It is a youth ministry that touches those lives in beautiful ways. It is a school, it is classes, it is encouragement, it is our men's group, it is all the components coming together to make such a difference. And so, yes, the heart, the heart that is the heart of your home, that my wish is for you, that you experience God's peace and healing more deeply, and that as you show fear the door, fear of an illness, fear of something happening to a loved one, fear of something happening economically across our country or to you where you are, that that heart of yours is encouraged by the message of tonight, that that heart of yours as we bring our focus now back to our spiritual heart in the place of our physical heart, beating strong in this divine idea, knowing that it is fully worthy. I hear the words of Jesus when he spoke to one of the, quote, criminals on each side of him. One, if you remember, was deriding him in some way, saying, well, if you're the Messiah, then why don't you free yourself and us with you? And the other one chided him and said, you and I, are paying a price for a crime that we committed. This man has committed no crime. And Jesus, looking at the man, and the man said to him, essentially, put in a good word for me, if you will. When you come into your kingdom, put in a good word for me. And Jesus turned to him, and he said, this day, shall you be with me in paradise this day. Now, here was a man who had obviously made a mistake in the eyes of the law, been sinful, created challenge and trouble, and was, quote, paying the price. Jesus demanded and exacted nothing from him. He was there with the fullness of his love and his spirit and saying, this day, you will be with me in paradise, knowing that there is only life, there is only wholeness, there is only this kingdom of God. And so here you and I are with wherever we may be in our walk on this Good Friday, having been fearful, dealing with an illness, worried about someone or something, whatever it might be. And Jesus is saying, to each of us, in this moment, you shall be with me in paradise. We don't have to 
leave this physical incarnation to get there. But when we do, then there is nothing, nothing that keeps us from that deeper experience. And we're given the gift, the opportunity through these teachings, through our love for God and for each other to experience more of that kingdom, that happiness now. I want to end my time with you tonight by encouraging an experience of anointing. I'm going to lead us into a meditation. And toward the end of that meditation, I'll ask you to retrieve your oil if you haven't already done so. And if you don't have oil, it's perfectly fine. We're going to simply use this as a symbol for receiving the Christ idea more deeply in our hearts and minds, for letting it come to the surface in our lives in such a way that we don't leave this night the same as when we entered it. And so I ask you now to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so, if that's possible for you where you are, and allow yourself to breathe deeply and make that beautiful sigh that the youth of unity so beautifully remind us of as you exhale, breathing in, <sighs> and breathing out, loving God, we are here in gratitude, in gratitude for you, for your unconditional love. We are here in gratitude for our way shower and teacher, Jesus the Christ, who came and said, you are beloved of God. You are my sisters and brothers. And all that I am, you are. This light of mine that I let shine is your light as well. And I encourage you, my sisters and brothers, to lay aside the fears and the angers, the upsets and the grievances, the failure look, to look past appearances, and embrace the wholeness of who you are. Embrace the beauty that God has created as you Release your fear of death, for I will teach you with an extreme lesson that there is no death. There is only life. Receive that Holy Spirit that I shared with the disciples there in the upper room after my resurrection. Allow yourself to drink in that comfort and that strength. Deepen your faith. Your faith in me, yes, but your faith in the indwelling Christ. Your faith in God in whatever way you conceive her or him to be. Your faith in each other. Your willingness to address each other in namaste and know that that divinity that you are indeed salutes the divinity in each other. We take a moment as we reflect on the act of anointing, experiencing that a little bit differently in this time. And we allow ourselves to feel the indwelling Christ rising up, doing the anointing. The words that I will use are beloved. I receive the anointing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You may choose words like, Beloved, I receive the anointing of God, of God's child, and the Holy Spirit. The words 
are not so important. The feeling is what is most important. The willingness to allow yourself to feel that holy anointing. My eyes are open now, and I invite you to open yours as well. If you're there with a beloved and you choose to anoint one another, then that is perfect. Whatever way you choose to do this is perfect. Jesus said in the scripture, when thou fasteth, anointest thy head, anointest thy head with oil. Touch thy face with oil and allow thyself to feel the holiness of the anointing. And so now, I receive the anointing. I make the sign of the cross, and then I put a circle around that cross. I receive the anointing in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, as you are experiencing this anointing in whatever way is perfect for you, allow yourself, if you will, in this moment to feel the presence of the Christ so strong and powerful and clear within you that it fills your mind. And realize that as you move through this Easter weekend, you are given the opportunity to remember this moment again and again. When fear crops up, to show it the door. When a faint heart begins to be felt, to go strong within yourself and feel the presence of our wayshower saying, I am here with you. Beloved, in this moment, you are with me in paradise. To feel the presence and the love of this community surrounding you and touching you and lifting you up, holding you in that place of holiness, for it is indeed who you are. And so it is. And so we let it be. Amen. And now it is time in our time together to give. You will have the opportunity in a moment to donate, if you will, by electronic means. The different methods of giving are there on the screen. You can give through whatever medium is comfortable for you. I have written out my check, and it's comfortable for me to give in that way tonight. But as we do so, I want us to touch in once again to the home that is this beautiful community. I am overwhelmed in this experience of being back with you, of looking out at the pews tonight and seeing the pictures of so many of you and knowing that beyond this sanctuary and into the homes where you live, we are all connected in a feeling of oneness, a feeling of gratitude for this precious, precious place. And so I thank you for all the generous giving that you've been giving, and I thank you for the gift that you give tonight. As you give it, as you think about it, as you hold it, and as you open yourself to experience that divine circulation, I ask you, if you will, to say our offering blessing with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I circulate, and I am grateful. Thank you, and God bless your gift. And now we take a moment to, with a closing prayer and benediction, bring a beautiful end to this sweet, sweet time together tonight. Loving God, I lift my hands in praise to you. I lift my heart in praise to you. I lift my hands and my heart in praise and gratitude to all of those who are hearing these words 
I lift my heart and my hands in praise to all of those hearing these words as they in turn, in their own perfect way, lift their hearts and their hands to bless their homes, to bless their lives, to bless the lives of others who are part of their lives, to bless this spiritual home. I lift my heart and my hands in gratitude and in praise to this community as we send this blessing out to all the world, recognizing that as we do so, the Holy Spirit takes our willingness and multiplies our willingness thousands of times to touch the hearts and minds of every heart and mind around this world, all those minds and hearts coming into these incarnations and those precious beings who have stepped out of this incarnation, leaving no one out, no one out. We are all bathed in this divine light, and for this we are grateful. And so it is. Amen.